Let's begin today's Zoom conference with West Virginia men's basketball coach Josh Eilert. Coach, we'll turn it over to you for an opening statement. Good morning. Um, great, uh, great win on Saturday and a great program win. Uh, you know, top to bottom in terms of our program is something uh, we certainly need to needed to have to to get that confidence rolling and uh, move forward, especially going into a, a two game road swing. You know, you know tomorrow, you know Central Florida and then Oklahoma State on on Saturday. So um, I think we're trending in the right direction, and, and we showed that um, some very positive things in that Kansas game and and what we're capable of doing. And uh, you know, we're even feel like we're getting closer to to having a, a complete roster and getting um, you know a day by day situation with Jesse. Uh, so. Um, yeah, we're, we're trending in the right direction and we got to keep that momentum going. I was very pleased with how we, you know, performed offensively uh, against Kansas. You know, one of the glaring statistics for me uh, was the 19 assists on offense. And uh, like I told our guys, we kind of showed some of that yesterday uh, in practice and film. You know, eight of nine of our guys that touched the floor had an assist. So uh, that's... Uh, how connected we got to be on offense to, to get, you know, good looks and, and uncontested looks. And we certainly uh, manufactured a lot more uncontested looks than we had uh, in the past, especially when you compare our game film to, you know, you know Oklahoma and, and some of those others that we've, we've, we've dropped. So a uh, great team effort, a uh, lot to improve on on the defensive end, you know, we gave up 53% uh, from the field and, and uh, they, you know, 85 points. So, like I told these guys, you know, each and every night, you're not going to be able to outscore people. But uh, in this instance, uh, that's kind of what happened. We, we shot the ball well enough to, to outscore someone. It wasn't uh, uh, what we did on the defense. Man. Okay, our first question comes from Greg Hunter. So, Josh, because of your guys' improved play, it, it seems like the chemistry, at least game day chemistry, I'm not saying you guys had bad, you know, personal chemistry before, but game day chemistry seems much better. Is it just a matter of time and getting the guys all to play together? What What's leading to all this? I think, I mean, I've, I've, I've spoke about that a lot. I mean, you know, a lot of these guys have, have played, you, you, almost any opponent you play have been playing for – you know, 15 games together, maybe even 18 if they played a foreign tour. So uh, they had developed a lot more chemistry. And, and if we were going to be successful, especially with all the changes in our roster and, and uh, adding guys so late, whether it be Raekwon, and Kerr, and Noah, and even uh, a Cook and Lewis and Jesse. And so, I mean, the, the chemistry, we didn't have time to develop that. And, and uh, the, the success was probably going to be predetermined based on, you know, how quickly that chemistry was built because it's hard to uh, build chemistry when you're, you're uh, you know, going against some of the, the best of the best and, and the best conference in the country. And, uh, you know, we you know, had a couple games under our belt uh, with, with the majority of our roster and, uh, roster and then you go to Houston for your first uh, league game, which was the, the, probably the best uh, defensive uh, team in the country. So um, those are things that it will set you back uh, from a chemistry standpoint, uh, trying to build that. But uh, we certainly, you know, went into the last three and, and uh, a couple of top 25 wins can go a long, direct, long ways with us in terms of our confidence and, and building that chemistry. And, and I think people are, especially the guys on the roster and, and everybody's kind of fallen uh, or starting to learn their, their role and, and what it's going to take for us to be successful as a team. So a follow up to that. Um, now you're going to add another piece uh, or, you know, reintroduce Jesse back to the lineup. How does that change uh, what you've done? Just chemistry, not wise, not necessarily, you know, scheme wise. Yeah. Hopefully that's a smoother transition, you know, a credit to Pat Sumnick, which has done an absolute phenomenal job, uh, especially here in the last two, three, four games, uh, uh, you know, filling that void for us and, and, and giving, giving us that, uh, that presence down low, especially on the defensive end, um, you know, guarding some of the, some of these bigs and, and shoring up uh, our deficiency there at the five position, but uh, he's done an absolute phenomenal job and, 
been a key to our success probably in the last uh, last several games that we've uh, come up on the on the winning side of. Next question comes from Kevin Kinder. Hey, good morning, Coach. Good morning, Kevin. Uh, you've used the word connected several times describing your offense and what you're striving toward. And I guess on one level, that just means passing, sharing the ball. But does it go deeper than that? Can you tell us a little bit more about that and your goals for what being connected truly is? I mean, more than anything, it's, 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 um, we talk a lot about shot selection. We also talk a lot about, uh, like I've talked in the past, trying to, uh, get uncontested looks, uh, cleaner looks. And uh, we break down a lot of film in this program and, and trying to find uh, those opportunities where there's another pass to be made. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we, we, we found over, over the course of uh, the last, you know, especially the last five, six games, that uh, we're leaving a lot of uncontested looks at the table because we're, we're forcing things and, and we're not recognizing the next pass. And uh, sometimes, whether it be uh, uh, a comfort dribble that somebody thinks they need to bounce and, and allows that uh, defense to rotate or, or not getting it out of our hands quick enough, you know, which allows the, the defense to rotate. Uh, but regardless, uh, we're not recognizing that quick enough. And uh, that's typically what I'm talking about with being connected. Uh, you know, there's, there's several op options to any given offense or any given play. Uh, are, are we... Are we infatuated with the, the first option or do we look at our, um, you know, our counter options on the back end of the play? So, um, you know, when I say connected, it's kind of covers, you know, a lot of those things in terms of, you know, being more efficient on the offensive end. And one quick follow up. Does that heavy film study and the use of that, does that really come from your background uh, being a video guy for a while and, you know, having that being one of your main things? Yeah, it was uh, that's a priority for me from from day one, uh, especially when I when I chose you know my staff and, and young assistants, and it was great that Deshaun had uh, done that video role for, with the Knicks, and and he was very very proficient with the the video, and I told uh, you know my young staff like this is I want you guys to all be able to do this uh, and kind of be your own video coordinator and not have to rely on, on uh, younger guys to kind of help you cut all that film because it, it, it is such a necessary uh, tool, uh, teaching tool in, in today's, today's game, and especially uh, with, with the rosters the way they are and college basketball the way it is. That, uh, there's so much turnover, and so there, there needs to be a lot more teaching uh, from a video standpoint, and we've made that a priority here uh, since I've uh, taken over. We'll move to John and Tony. Josh, I have two. The first one, um, Central Florida. What did they do well against Kansas and Texas to win those games? Well, they were down 16 uh, against Kansas at one point. Uh, they, they threw some zone at both those guys or both those teams, and, and uh, it, it really threw them off. They hadn't shown much zone at all prior to the Kansas game. I think it uh, threw them for a loop, uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, you know things started uh, going their direction, and they started seeing some shots fall, and, and their defensive intensity just continued to raise uh, throughout that game, and and uh, they they were so active defensively that uh, they really gave uh, both those teams some problems, and uh, you know I, they're not really I don't think at the end of the day he's a he's a zone uh, guy. I mean I think he's wants to primarily be a man-to-man -man, uh, coach, and, and but he will change a lot of defenses on him and his man-to-man his -man and, and uh, is as good as anybody's in the country. I mean, I think they have a, a number four defensive ranking and, and they're 24th in the country in opponents' points per game. So uh, they hang their head on their defense and they got a, a good group of, of very physical um, uh a very physical roster from top to bottom that can really give you problems on the defensive end. And second one here, uh, how do you uh, translate, take what you did against Kansas on the road now, and what is your philosophy on how you approach this with your guys in road games? We got to rebound one, first and foremost. I mean, it's a, it's a broken record in our program. We have to rebound. I think uh, 
like I've told those guys, we can do all the game planning we want, but if we're, if we're not quick to the ball and we're not uh, taking care of the glass, uh, we're going to have a hard time beating anybody. And uh, I don't think it's uh, a coincidence that we out-rebounded Texas by one and out-rebounded Kansas by nine and, and won those games. So uh, that's first and foremost. It's got to, we got to travel. Uh, you know, when we travel and hit the road, we got to uh, have that type of intensity that uh, we've had in the last couple of games here at the Coliseum and try to be quick to the ball and, and uh, not be playing on our heels. And, and we kind of, I thought that was kind of the case in the Houston game. I thought that was kind of the case in, in, the, in the Oklahoma game. I felt like we were, you know, playing on our heels a lot. And we were, you know, you know they were always quicker than the ball. So uh, we got to turn up that, uh, turn up that intensity and, and pretend like we got 16,000 uh, fans behind us and, and uh, you know, root for us. So uh, we got to figure out a way to muster that, uh, that energy and, and uh, bring it uh, to the table tomorrow. John Ravy. In the month since Raekwon was allowed by a judge to compete, how has that decision affected him both on and off the basketball court, including his mental outlook and overall demeanor and happiness? It's been great. You know, it's, uh, he raised all smiles. So he's got uh, he's got basketball in his life, and he's had uh, multiple family members, you know, traveling to see him play, and and uh, it's it's meant the it's meant the world to him that he can just compete in the game he loves and compete, uh, you know, with the lights on, not just in practice. So uh, I said over and over, Ray, Ray needs that. And he certainly needs that competitive, uh, you know, fire. He needs to fuel that each and every day. And, and the game of basketball is, is uh, you know, where he gets his happiness. So uh, it's, it's meant the world to him. And, and it's so happy. I'm so happy for him that uh, that worked out in his favor and, and, so many other guys across the country that, you know, been sitting and, and trying to figure out the, you know, what their next move was, but the, for everybody to be able to compete, I think that's a, a beautiful thing. Justin Jackson. Hey, good morning, coach. How you doing? Good. I guess uh, travel will be a little bit better, better today or. You no, know, I'm crossing my fingers. You know, <laughs> it's uh, everything's smooth so far today. I think we got a plane in the air and it's headed to Clarksburg. So, um, you know, I, hopefully we don't have a mechanic uh, doing anything or some mechanical issues that throw us off. But uh, knock on wood, uh, we're we're smooth sailing so far and we're we're headed to sunshine. I assume there's sunshine down there. I yeah. look, but my luck, it might be raining, but I hope there's some sunshine that we can soak up. Hey, uh, a question on uh, Jesse here. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, he practiced uh, the day before the Kansas game, uh, dressed for the Kansas game. Um, as you take this trip now, this road trip, um, what will go into the decision on whether or not he plays? Is it how he feels? Is it what your gut tells you? Is it what the doctors say? Is it a combination? Uh, you know, what, what will go into that decision? be everything i mean we we say we practiced before ku he did uh he did very very limited five on five <laughs> so um he was there he was active you know all the five on oh drills you know he was in uh but uh it was uh we we limited on his five on five and we did throw him out there uh, for some con for some for some contact drills and see where he was but um he got uncomfortable at one point in trying to uh, guard Big Ali, you know, at the post, and, and it uh, we backed off uh, as soon as he felt that uncomfort. And, and we gotta be we gotta be careful with it, make sure uh, we're not pushing it too fast. And so, you know, he warmed up against Kansas, and and was it uh, far fetched that we you know throw him in at any given point if we, we got very desperate? You know, I think he would have been all for it, but. Uh, I got to be smart with him. That's uh, right. my responsibility is to, to do, do the best thing by our guys. And uh, just because a guy is, uh, you know, raring to go and, and is willing to, uh, it doesn't mean it's the best for him. So, um, you know, we, we went light yesterday. We did a lot of film. Uh, we did a lot of, you know, walking through their sets. Uh, we, we, we got shots up. And so we didn't do any contact yesterday, five on five contact. So I didn't, didn't uh, have that uh, to, to go off of. 
So today when we get travel down to, to Orlando, we'll see where he's at, what his comfort level is, uh, and, and throw him out there probably in some more five on five to see where he is. So um, it's a fluid situation. Not sure if uh, he'll go tomorrow or not, uh, but uh, the good thing is uh, Pat's playing really well and, and giving us great minutes. So uh, we don't feel uh, as forced, uh, feel like we have to force the issue as much yeah. as we probably would have maybe uh, a week or so ago if we were in the same situation. And then one last thing here. Um, you know, obviously, you know, they probably all played together over the summer. I don't know how much of that you really get to to, to watch because, uh, you know, you, you obviously got other things to do. Uh, so, like, when Jesse's out there on the floor now, even if it's just in a limited experience, he's out there now with Raekwon, with Kerr, uh, with Noah. I'm, I'm sure that hasn't always been the case. Do you have any kind of idea what the potential – looks like if that makes any it makes any sense uh what that group looks like together yeah. because they yeah, probably yeah. haven't been together i mean no i've seen them like in the, in the preseason preseason practices I, i'd switched a lot of those teams up and continue to to work through it and i've seen the combination of, of, of kerr and, and ray and and uh jesse and and uh you know other complimentary pieces with them and and uh I was very, very excited about that, you know, those guys playing. And, and uh, you know, I felt like we had some real good depth. You know, at that point, I never thought Noah was going to play by any means. But, um, yeah, I've seen them together. It's uh, I was it's probably, you know, you go back to the early interviews. I was I was pretty – probably had a big smile on my face thinking you know, those guys are going to be with us uh, from day one. And it just wasn't the case. You know, Curtis, nine-game suspension and – Ray not playing the first 10 and then Jesse getting hurt. So, you know, I've seen him uh, plenty playing together. And it's, uh, it's a special unit when you get all those guys together. Thank you, Coach. Bob Hertzel. Yeah, uh, Josh, uh, along the lines of what Justin was asking, but uh, quite, quite different in a way. Uh, obviously, when Jesse got hurt, told you it'd be about a month, you knew he'd be coming back. You you probably started thinking about how you were going to use them, et cetera, and how, what, what your lineup would look like. That's some that comes along and changes, I suspect, many of the views and the things. You're talking about how good your chemistry is now. How do you work that out? Uh, I mean, does, does uh, some that go back to where he was, at four, do they can they play together, or should they be on the floor at different times? What are your thoughts on that as they get ready? We certainly play together. Um, certainly play together, but we also have other guys at uh, uh, options, and, and that's that's you know I, that's what I wish I had from the beginning was options. And uh, you know, Pat is probably the you know he's he's become and, and the best. Uh, uh, five option outside of what I had with Jesse. So uh, he certainly can shore up any minutes that, you know, you don't fill with Jesse, but he can also play the four and, and, and guard the four. And Cook, uh, Cook is, uh, he's a, he's a four as well. So uh, Quinn is a four. So we have more depth there, more options. So early, early on in the season, I'm always worried about was Jesse getting in foul trouble and how we, how we navigate that. Now I, I feel like, uh, We've got that short up to where okay we can be more aggressive with Jesse and we have uh, we have you know Pat to, to service all those minutes if he does get in foul trouble so I just feel like I have more flexibility and from a, from a coaching standpoint especially in this league having some flexibility with your roster is going to be critical. It seems like Pat's a big part of that chemistry of the that you just talked about his energy yeah, he, and stuff. Uh, uh, so obviously you want to see that he gets minutes. Uh, at the, even even when Jesse's back, I presume. Yeah, he's going to be a critical part of anything we do moving forward, and and uh, that's uh, having having that uh, confidence rolling, and and he he knows deep down the way he can play, and I don't think he's even second guessing himself in any way at this point. So uh, that's that's just going to be you know in our best interest, you know, with with that confidence that he's uh, rolling with. Thank you. Mike Kazaza. Hey, Josh, how are you? Good. How are you, Mike? Um, I'm good. Thank you. Uh, you covered a bunch of stuff. Just one thing I want to go back to. Um, you played very well against Texas, very well against Kansas. 
a common denominator there. They're both ranked, but you both have them at home. Um, Oklahoma in between, just just very different. Also ranked teams, so that, that has something to do with it, I'm sure. But it, is it as simple what you watched live and on film just being on the road? Or I know some unique things went into that, but just that energy or that focus or that whatever you lacked, <clears throat> excuse me, whatever you lacked that day you've had in the home games, or is it more than that? And there's, you can't just say, oh, you know, we're on the home, things will be better. And hey, we better be a little bit no, better. I mean, it's, it's, it's been kind of the, the, the theme. Like we have, we don't have a road win. Houston, we went to Oklahoma. We don't have a road win. And those are two very hard ones to get, two very hard places to play. Uh, Central Florida is going to be no different. But uh, we we need to prioritize the road. We, we need to figure out, you know, what's what what's what are we lacking on the road that we're getting at home? And, uh, you know, as coaching staff, we continue to look at uh, what we can do to, to have them prepared and ready and have that uh, pep in their step and, and be the first one to the floor. We need to be the first one to the floor and set that tone on the, on the road, just like you kind of set that tone on you know, at home. So, um, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's the goal. That's, we have one goal in mind right now, and that's getting the road. It could be lineups. It could be anything that happens in the game, but it also sounds like how you get your team to the jump too. I mean, rest, preparation, film instead of practice. How much of just thinking through things and, and I don't even know if you can be consistent because maybe all these road trips are different, but you almost have to win that battle before the game. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you have to, uh, you have to game plan. Uh, for your rest and recovery as much as you game plan for, for the team you're playing. So uh, you, you can have the best game plan in the world and try to execute it. But uh, if you're a step slow to everything you do and, and uh, you just don't have that energy, and, uh, you're not going to be successful. So, uh, yeah, we, we think about that and we plan for all those things. And uh, you certainly hope travel goes smooth because you see, if, if, you know, I'm sure there's a correlation to, people's travel and the length of people's travel and, and uh, their success on the road in this league. It's going to be, it's imperative that uh, everything goes smooth and, and we have that uh, that energy and that focus going into a, a big uh, road, road contest uh, down in Florida. We'll go back to John Antonic. Last one for me. Um, just looking at uh, UCF again here. Um, Primarily, uh, their two main scorers are guards. Looks like they get a lot of their points from the backcourt. And then Avery comes off the bench as one of their top scorers. What do you see from their personnel? What gives you uh, concern with them? Their physicality. Uh, they, they they really lock in on the defensive end. And they have good size from top to bottom. So uh, we're going to have to be good with the ball. Uh, we can't be playing on our heels by any means. We, we have to you know attack them. We have to be the aggressor. Uh, they, they can't have us turned around with their physicality. So, you know, yeah, I mean, they're a really good defensive team. And, and uh, they force a lot of turnovers and, and they, they get up in you. So uh, we can't uh, we can't back down by any means. And, and we got to, you know, take the fight to them. That concludes our Zoom conference for today. Coach Eilert, thank you for your time. Thank you.